a good day to you all. We are very happy to see these pictures which remind us of our first encounter as married, as a couple on the altar there before God, we gave our word of love one to the other. We made our oath one to the other, and this is what God uses. God uses the Word. Good day to you all. God is the Word. As long as people do not understand this revelation that God is Word, is the Word, that God gave, gives and honors, fulfills His Word, as long as a person does not understand the meaning of this, that God is Word, God is the Word, he will not understand what it means, what God is asking of him. At times a person wants to serve God, he wants to give offerings, he wants to do this, he wants to do that. He wants to surrender to the work of God, but he does not honor his Word. He does not honor his own word. And I mean here, honoring his own word, because he lies, he deceives, he pretends, you know, he tricks others, says, look, I'll pay it tomorrow, but he doesn't pay. He agrees with something and he fails. So this simple word which we use daily, every time, all the day, all day, every moment, this word, this word, God will demand of it. God will charge each and every word which we pronounce. So if a person does not have this character of honoring his word, because when you give your word, no one obliges you to give. It's something that's yours. It's spontaneous. It comes out of your mind, your intellect. You gave because you wanted. It was your desire. So when a person understands that the Word of God reflects God's character just as our Word reflects our character. Because, see, which it's the theme of, of today's program. If I, if I cannot honor the word which I gave not only to you but to people normal from being a child, how will I honor my word with you, claiming that I love you, etc., etc.? Because there's no sincerity in your word, neither to yourself. Imagine with God. Then, then comes God. Because if our word given to one another or to others is not honored, how? Will we take the word of God and apply it in our lives? If we don't honor our own word, which we see, we see one another. And God, we do not see. God is spirit. He's the word. He is the word. So, my friends, pay close attention. Your salvation, my, our salvation, depends on our word. Deep down inside, we will see this. Think with me. How many times did you speak, speak, speak? And after you forgot, you forgot, you forgot. And you forgot or you forget that from all the words which we pronounce, one day we will settle accounts because the word reflects the character of the one who speaks. So, my word, I work, I work with the word of God. My work is to lead the word of God to the people. My work is to teach the word of God. 
My work involves the word 24 hours a day. But if I do not live this word, if I do not apply this word, if I do not obey this word, what right do I have to speak of this word to the people? Because I don't believe, because when I apply the word of God in my life, if I don't, how can I transfer, teach others this word? Because when you speak about the word of God, you see justice, truth. And when you speak, the words which are spoken to others, is it accompanied by righteousness, truth, or deceit? So there's the difference. Here's the sincerity. The true desire for that to happen or take place. It's what David spoke, guided, directed by the Holy Spirit, that God is pleased in sincerity. God is delighted by it. And sincerity, my friend, do you know where it comes from? Where the word sincerity comes from? The word sincerity came from the potter. He used to make clay out of mud and he would put it at the sun for it to put it under the sun. But some would crack on their own. So what would he do? Instead of throwing it away or break them, he would take wax and cover the cracks. He would paint it and that vase that vase with wax would look exactly as the one without wax. When a person wants to buy a vase, he does not want one which is painted or covered by wax. He wants a, an original one, pure, with no defects. But the one that is broken... I believe that it's the lack of water. It became, it got too dry. There was too much clay because the water is the word of God, which does not allow it to break, to crack in your life, to, to fail. So there was too much clay, but few water, which means the truth was lacking. Sincerity was lacking. So, the potter, not wanting to lose the, the vase, he put wax on it and sold it, and people bought it, thinking that it was one without a crack. So, God is pleased in sincerity. Even if it's brute, Still, God loves he who is sincere. So, we watch testimonies of people who killed, they stole, they did all sorts of wrong things, and they obtained the mercy of God. And others who are around in churches for years, but have not yet been baptized with the Holy Spirit, and the one who was a criminal, etc., etc., received the baptism of the Holy Spirit inside of a prison cell because there was sincerity. Look at the scripture where Jesus teaches. But now it's important for you to notice that Jesus says the following, Then, the kingdom of heaven here is not referring to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, which means they went out to meet the bridegroom in order to enter the kingdom of heaven because only the groom could lead them to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, it is invisible 
before the human eyes. Just as the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is in heaven. It says it all. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here on earth. It is the church of the Lord Jesus. The church of the Lord Jesus is the kingdom of God. His bride. The kingdom of God is the church. So people at times are in the church because the ten virgins were in the kingdom of God. They considered themselves brides. All of them were virgins. All ten considered themselves brides. Well, they were virgins, which means they were holy, pure, etc. But out of the ten virgins, which means the ten people who formed part of the church, which is the kingdom of God here on earth, five were wise, prudent, which means a person who is wise, prudent, is one who thinks, evaluates, he weighs, he uses intelligence, he uses faith with intelligence. But the five foolish, referred to as foolish, crazy, they did not think, they used their hearts. So, although being amongst the wise, being in the church or in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, at the moment in which the bridegroom arrived, Jesus, they were asleep. And when they got up, they had no oil, which means the Holy Spirit. This is why we hit on this key that you need to receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that he who does not have the Spirit of the Lord Jesus is not his. And when he calls them fools, it's because they did nothing to please the groom. They would do things which the groom would not agree with. That's why in the end he says that he never knew them. Because there was no communion, there was no dedication, a surrender, there was no hope anxiously waiting for that moment of being with the groom. So she got tired. It's even good for you to mention this, Esther, because when, for example, it's the same thing. When the two of us were engaged, we were already committed. The Bible says that when one is engaged, only the word is missing. Only the marriage is missing. You see, Mary and Joseph were already engaged. They were engaged. What was missing was for them to marry, the word to be given, the commitment. One was already practically committed to the other, rather. Here's where the great difference is. So what the Lord Jesus says to these five foolish is specifically this. He did not know them. And in the end it refers to that because they did not have the behavior whilst being engaged. The behavior he expected them to have. As I was saying, the two of us, when we were engaged, I remember you obviously would do this, but I'm speaking for myself. I remember that whatever I would do at work, at school, at home, wherever I was, I was thinking about you. I wanted to work more, to earn more, to be able to give you more comfort, a greater comfort. I wanted to do something to benefit you. I wanted, which means I was thinking on how I could please you. I used to think about this whilst being engaged. When we got married, then 
I was realized, I was fulfilled, I was completed when we were committed, married. And the same with you. I was also anxious for this day which I would be with you forever, which means you did not think. By no means would you think about this world. You would not think about parties, about clubbing, or being amongst others in the company of others. No, I was thinking about the moment I would be with you. Imagine, Esther, for example, you are you were engaged with me, and then, without speaking to me, you would go to a party, to the club. How do you think I would feel? Hold on, you're going to have fun in a place in which I'm not present, you're already committed to me. When a person is committed to the Lord Jesus, he does everything to please him. For the Lord Jesus and function of the Lord Jesus in this case. So it's important for you to notice that this is one of the reasons as to why people have not received the Holy Spirit. Because they are in the church, they don't live in sin, but they enjoy the life of being single as if they were not committed to the groom who is the Lord Jesus. So they don't have this vision, this understanding. No. Now my Lord is in first place. How can I go to a place? How can I participate of a party in which my Lord is not? No, I won't go without him. There's no pleasure. There's no pleasure of going out alone. But he must be accompanied by the groom. So the fools were like this. Likewise, for example, when there is the carnival, many people claim to be Christians, claim to be faithful in churches, but they participate of the carnival. How can one who lives in the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of justice, it's the kingdom of order, it's the kingdom of submission, of discipline, and without the king, there is no way for one to be in the kingdom. The kingdom is where there is a king. So when a person lives in the kingdom of God, which is the church, by no means will he ever submit himself to being in a party, especially a, a festival of the flesh, which opposes the kingdom of God. So it is a matter of personal conscience. Just look, Esther. Each one has his own conscience. Oh, I don't think it's a sin to enjoy a bit. But hold on. Let me enjoy the holidays, my friends. But hold on. What is there at that festival? It's the festival of the flesh. Carnival, which means the festival of the, the flesh. Or any other which involves the flesh, where there's toxic, uh, uh, toxic drinking, adultery, fornication, lies, deceit, theft, every worthless thing is within the context of the flesh. But he who is in the kingdom of God, how will he please the flesh being in the kingdom of God? In the kingdom of God, we please the spirit. You are spirit and you please the spirit of God. So look carefully, my friends. We are not here to criticize, judge, toss stones. No, to criticize. But we are here teaching the scripture which Jesus spoke. Then the kingdom of heaven, which means in order for you to enter the kingdom of heaven, you need to go through the kingdom of God, which is the church. And passing through the kingdom of God, you will be tested. You'll be tested. There will be sacrifice. One will be tested, tested. He'll be tested to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's not just, oh, I entered, now I'm in the church. No. 
you'll be tested. The kingdom of heaven is taken by force. And only the violent take it by force. So people need to have this understanding, which at times a person thinks because he belongs to a specific church or denomination that he is well with God. When that's not the case. Because at that moment he's in the church, that moment, that hour, that day. But when he leaves the church, the kingdom of God, we could say, he literally leaves the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God stays in the church, he goes out, he goes to the nightclubs, he goes and indulges. And then Jesus says, five were wise and five were foolish, foolish, foolish. And when Jesus comes, he will find people who will not have the oil to maintain the lamps, the, the flames of faith alive. The following verse reads that, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard. Then he came. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. They had to meet him. There was no light. There was no electricity. So they needed to have the lamps on. And the lamp depended on the, the oil, the combustion to keep the flames on. But those who did not have, they stayed in the dark. And this oil is the Holy Spirit. He who does not have the Holy Spirit is still in darkness. So it's worthless for you to go to the front, to the altar, make vows of love and etc. And then when you leave there, you continue living your personal life the way you enjoy it. You see that here, he calls him the groom and she the bridegroom, or the bride rather. He is the bridegroom, she is the bride. So there's a word that he would return, he would come, she would wait and he would marry her. So everything involves the word, the fulfillment of that promise. Because when one is engaged, back then, we inherit these customs of back then, when one was engaged. In our days, today there's no engagement, it's a mess. They date here and there, it's a mess. But back then when we were committed, my parents went to the house of your parents. And so... It was sealed, the, the engagement, which means the word was given. The word was given. And we were sealed. We were committed once and for all. So, my friends, many people say, I want to be happy. I want to get married to be happy. It's because he's already unhappy. And if he does not follow the steps, the biblical pattern of honoring his word. Later on, he becomes unhappy, the marriage is undone, the children are separated, and it becomes hell. And then the person says, but God, where were you? Oh, Lord, I was in the church. I was always in the church, faithful in my offerings and my tithe. On Sundays, I was always present in the church. So what? Jesus speaks about this, my friends. This scripture in Matthew 25, from 1 to 13, it's worth reading and meditating because here is your life. Either you are prudent or you are foolish. Either you are 
a bride, a virgin bride, who is wise, prudent, who only thinks about the day of the marriage, the wedding day, or you are in the church, a bride, virgin, but you only think about enjoying yourself before meeting with the groom. I would no longer accept you, Esther, if if you would have a, a secular and worldly life, if you would enjoy away from me, far from me, nor would I feel well if you would not come with me, if you were not with me, because we could be together at a party, depending on the party, of course. So, for example, a wedding celebration, because you become one. How can you separate? But I mean before, before marriage, when we are in that period before marriage, we are already committed. We're not yet one flesh. But we're not. So we have our lives, you work, you have your duties, and I would have my duties. So if I would go to a birthday party, if I would go to a family party, I would not feel well to go to such without you. And vice versa, you would also not feel happy. The joy is incomplete. Although being at a party, although being at a feast. So friends, think about your life. Think about what you want from the Lord Jesus. And what have you given to him? Because you will receive from him according to what you have placed on the altar. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold the bridegroom, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are running, are going out, are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. But then it was late. The following scripture reads, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither did the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man, who is Jesus, is coming. This final scripture reminds me of those whom Jesus mentioned that they would heal. Lord, but we healed the sick. We preached the gospel. We prophesied. We cast out demons. Jesus said, I never knew you. Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. With those as well, they also asked, Lord, Lord, open the, to us. But he said, no, I don't know you. Who am I opening this door for? I don't know you. Which means whoever does the work, casts out demons, preaches the gospel, prophesies, etc., etc., but does not live his communion with God. He does not live his engagement with the Lord Jesus. So then he'll hear the same thing. I do not know you. Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. So, this scripture, it is parallel, it is equal to those who would perform miracles, do the work of God, but we're not of God. We're not of God. And how can we evaluate when a pastor is of God and not of God? 
What can you, with your experience, what have you verified and confirmed from those who are and those who aren't? What? Because there are many churches, many denominations, in summary. So who is who? How do you identify a pastor of God? Because you were born inside of the church. Your parents were Christians, your grandparents. So you grew up in this religious circle. So I ask you, how could you identify that pastor who was of God from the one who was not of God? I would always look at that which he preached and that which he lived. Which means for you to speak about the word of God, many do, it's easy, but to live this word. Then it's sacrifice. At home, how he treats his family, how he respects his wife, how he considers his wife. If he knows how God hates divorce, which means these are people who are not connected to God, so they don't live well one with the other. So for you to say one thing and live another, it's identified that it's not a truthful person, a sincere person. Likewise, it's with, it's with these these. Brides here, they were brides, they were virgins, pure. To a certain extent, they had their lamps on, but it went off and they stayed in the dark. And what does darkness reveal here? Verse 9 is exactly what we live today. The word of God is being preached. So the bridegroom is saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. The hour is, is at hand, but people are not bothered. They don't care as much as we are here speaking about the gospel, announcing this word. People are not giving ears. So they are living exactly this moment, which is being said, the groom is coming, but where is the oil? Where will he find the oil? Where is he going to buy this oil? It's seeking, having the Holy Spirit, separating himself from the world. This is the oil he needs to have, this fear that the bridegroom will arrive at any time and he needs to find this person waiting, separated from the world. So, for example, a pastor preaches the word of God, heals the sick, he sets people free from demons, but he does this as a work. He doesn't live it. He does not live that which he preaches. He does not live the word which he speaks to people. So this pastor, at home, we could say he's like, a horse, or he doesn't treat his wife with respect, or he's an adulterer, or has the eyes of an adulterer, the eyes filled with adultery. The Apostle Peter speaks about this, that at times a person has eyes filled with adultery, he keeps desiring others. He's not physically committing adultery, but in his heart he already committed. So these men, these men, obviously, will stay out. Jesus said, away from me, you who practice lawlessness, I do not know you. The same thing he says to the virgins who are pure, pure who do not fornicate, nor steal, nor kill. At times, they had just the appearance, but the heart was distant. distant. Because to wear a wedding gown, everybody does. But who is truly a, a bride? 
To say one is a virgin, that's one thing. But who's truly a virgin? Who was cleansed in the blood of Jesus? So friends, the bridegroom is coming. Evaluate and weigh your life. Weigh your life. For the love you have unto Jesus, for your salvation, for your soul, weigh your life. Because when the door is shut, it's worthless to knock. Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. But here, after the door is shut, the door to the kingdom of heaven is shut. There's no way. There's nothing else that can be done. Now is the time. And we are living, we are living today the same environment and even many times probably much worse than the days of Noah when people would marry and give into marriage which means there was no order there was no respect there was no discipline it was men with men women with women men with children and a child with women one with ten ten with one in summary it was a mess before this world. It was a mess. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, where they would marry, given to marriage, suddenly came the flood. The ark was ready and only one man, one man, that entire generation, only one man, obviously took his family because they were with him. Likewise will happen very soon in this world. Jesus will return. The rapture is one of the signs of his coming. There are three signs, three Three phases. The raptures were the first. So what you're facing today is insignificant. The tribulations which we face today, they are insignificant. Because when Jesus takes his church, the true church, so then those who stay will face the great tribulation. So the question is, are you ready for this day? Because marriage, covenant with God, demands faithfulness. So how can you say you have this covenant with God but live? a life which is wild. God is not pleased with that which you live. So that's not faithfulness. And when there is no faithfulness, it's like those five foolish virgins who were not bothered with honoring their word before the altar of God, of faithfulness, of following Him. Whatever the problem you are facing, be it wealth or misery, in sickness and in health, you made this oath with on the altar to follow this God. And then after you failed with it. You know, I was thinking, Esther. In the song, Eternity is mentioned. And you know that from very young, I used to think. I think everybody thinks like this, but I, I think. You have a dream, but your dream, you don't want it to be materialized. And then this dream fades away, but you want to maintain that dream alive. For example, I wanted to get married. 
because come on, I needed to be completed. The Lord Jesus himself said it's not good for a man to be alone. He says, God says this in the beginning of the human creation, it's not good for a man to be alone. So I wanted a person to complete me. Why? Because I did not want to move from branch to branch like a monkey. I didn't want that. I wanted something which would be forever in our marriage, Esther. We're going to complete 49 years. 49 years. So this is, we could say, it's something distinguished today, but this shows our union, our word, our honor, our character. You know, we live that which we preach. And this we have lived throughout our lives. So far and until the day we'll have to go. We will leave if Jesus doesn't return before. And I used to think as well about the eternity of my soul because I wanted a long-lasting marriage for my whole life as of my parents, the example of my parents and you with your parents. But above all, I wanted a marriage which would bring me eternity, which is to live through all eternity, which means be endless, not be worried about death or thinking oh one day I'm going to have to leave you and you're going to have to leave me no but I wanted an eternal marriage and this only with the Lord Jesus when you marry him you will live the eternity with him and in order for this eternity to take place this desire this dream fabulous dream an eternal dream to be effective only through the Holy Spirit. This is why Paul says he who does not have the Holy Spirit does not belong to him. When a person, we try to explain the simplest form possible in order for no one to lack understanding. See, when we got married, what united us, it was the Spirit of Love, the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? Love, the spirit of love, of the true love, not this fake love which this world demonstrates, but the love of God. So I had the spirit of love, you had the spirit of love, so we united our hearts and we were glued one to the other by the Spirit of Love. And this is how it is when a person truly, sincerely surrenders to the Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus comes and pours His love. He glues, He makes the person and Jesus, the candidate and Jesus to become one. One being, one spirit, one thought. One spirit. So, friends, if there's something you need to invest above all things, above it all, above everything, is the Holy Spirit, is in receiving the Holy Spirit because He will give you eternal life. He will guarantee your eternal life. The life Life is not death with suffering, with traumas and pain. Jesus said that those who get lost will live eternally in the lake of fire and sulfur where there will be crying and gnashing of teeth. You know, when you feel pain, we gnash our teeth. We gnash our teeth. So one will live gnashing his teeth in this place and apart from that. 
Serão um lugar onde It will be a place where the worms do not die. Have you ever thought living apart from the pain, the gnashing of teeth, to have the worms there with you, climbing up your spiritual body, that body specifically to suffer? Have you ever thought about the worms entering your nostrils, your mouth, etc., etc., through all eternity, to live with worms. This will happen to those who get lost. Contrary to those who live in eternity, they will live the joy of the Holy Spirit in the presence of the Most High throughout throughout eternity because God the Father is eternal the true children of God will also be eternal definitely praise be to God